I'm not a fan of Trudeau because I don't think he's capable of saying an honest word. Oh. If he had an ounce of character, he would have never run. I'm not happy about him. I, I can't imagine a politician doing anything more inappropriate than that. Yeah, well, there's, there's not a lot there, I'm afraid. You weasel. No excuse for it. When I look at Trudeau, there's a couple of things that I see. I see someone who hasn't grown up. Ju Justin Trudeau's mode of governance is to top each scandal with a bigger scandal. And he's really good at that. There are the sorts of solutions that children toy with when they have no idea what they're contending with. I think our leader, Trudeau, I don't think I've ever heard him say a true word. Living in Justin Trudeau's Canada, it's a never, it's a never ending, hallucinogenic, surreal dream. <laughs> it, I'm not a fan of Trudeau because I don't think he's capable of saying an honest word. And I, I truly mean that. And I've watched his speeches over and over, watching to see what's going on with him. And all I see is acting. If you're not suited for the position, if you're not the man for the position, you can be absolutely 100% sure that the power will corrupt you. Oh. If he had an ounce of character, he would have never run. I'm not happy about him. I, I, I can't imagine a politician doing anything more inappropriate than that. Look, one of the things that happens if you're a political leader is you're, you're exposed to criticism of all sorts. And, and part of that's to stop your power from degenerating to something approximating mm -hmm. a tyranny. So you, you kind of have to put up with it. If you have the advantage of a name, you have a moral duty to supersede the accomplishments of the person who bore that name and gave it its weight before you dare capitalize on it in the public sphere. And there's, Trudeau did none of that. Yeah. So, you know, hypothetically, Trudeau is trying to tip us away from our colonial past, but I don't believe any of this is political. I think that he is, he's a narcissistic, dark tetrad type, and he'll use whatever machinations him and Stephen Wilbo, that bloody minister, hypothetically responsible for, for energy and the environment, to the degree they overlap. He's such a bloody poser. And so, you know, Canadians have no idea what Trudeau is. Yeah, well, there's... There's not a lot there, I'm afraid. I don't believe that if he had any true character that he would have run because he ran on the strength of his name and he hadn't earned the right to do that. He's an enemy of the oil and, and, and gas industry. It's an utter and absolute bloody catastrophe. I try to put myself in the position of the people that I'm criticizing. I think he's a narcissist. I'm afraid that our prime minister is only capable of running his ideas on a few very narrow ideological tracks. That indicates, I think, precisely the way he thinks. And I don't think he does think. I think he runs an ideology in his head and accepts the output without question. And I think we're really going to pay for it in Canada in ways that we can't yet imagine. Man who capitalized without virtue on the name of his father. He didn't earn his name. Trudeau is exactly what you would be afraid of if you were afraid of him. It's very disruptive to raise your children on a sinking ship. And if you don't think Canada is a sinking ship, you're an idiot. We now make less per capita than people in Mississippi. We're worse off than the people in the worst off state in the US. Yeah, it's a race to the bottom. The OECD predicts that we'll be the worst performing country in the developed world for the next three decades. Justin has no training for this, no experience. He's not he was a part-time drama teacher, fundamentally. He hadn't run a business. He just didn't know enough to be prime minister. No, you're going to promote competent people. We saw the first evidence of that when he put his cabinet together. He insisted upon making it 50% women, despite the fact that only about 22% of the elected MPs were women. And it was easier for him to do that than it was for him to screen people for the sort of competence that would actually be necessary mm. to be cabinet members. His father was very famous. Sure. And so that put Trudeau at a tremendous advantage with regards to moving into a leadership position in Canada. It's not excusable. You should move ahead on your own merits, especially if you're daring to do something like run a country. I don't think Canadians really are aware of how vicious a hit the reputation of our country has taken under our current prime minister. It doesn't look because I don't think anybody who lies with every single word and gesture ever has principles. And I know, for example, this was definitely true during the pandemic. And this was true not only of the liberals, Trudeau's party, but also of the conservatives and the socialists, is that um, during the pandemic, all our politicians did nothing but sample 
um, opinion poll constantly and then derive policy as a consequence of sampling the very people that they frightened with their propagandistic idiocy and then produce policy and then pretend as an outright complete bloody lie that it was the science leading it and that's how Trudeau governs in relationship to everything he looks for the easiest moral advantage we're saving the planet it's like yeah I don't think so buddy well you get elected and your first act is to make the cabinet 50% women, despite the fact that only 25% of the elected members are female. It's like, okay, you just have your talent pool. The leader of my country ran away from a protest citing security concerns, which is a very bad move mm. to begin with. It's like, well, I have to leave because you people are so dangerous. It's you like, think it shows weakness? Well, no, it's, it's, it's worse than that. It's, it's an instigation. It's an instigation it, because he said that the reason he had to leave was because of security concerns, which means you people are dangerous and not to be trusted. Mm. I, I truly mean that. And I've watched his speeches over and over, watching to see what's going on with him. And all I see is acting. What's the big problem? Equity between men and women. It's like, sorry, that's not the big problem. That's not even, you're not even scratching the surface of the problem with that approach. And your solutions, it's like, you can learn those solutions your first week in women's studies. Under the jurisdiction of this preposterous narcissist, we've compromised virtually every institution of integrity in Canada. Well, he's lying, and I'm not. So that's a big part of the, that's a big part of the issue. I don't believe that he ever says a word that's true. I think he's at least narcissistic, at minimum. And I think he's enabled by the useful idiots of the liberal left. And I actually think that's a very widespread problem and probably more typical of Canada now than any other developed country. From what I've been able to observe, it's all stage acting. He's crafted a persona. He has a particular instrumental goal in mind and everything is subordinated to serve that. And Trudeau has no idea what that did to Canada's international reputation. Okay, but you're prime minister. And he's expressed admiration for the Chinese Communist Party because they can be very efficient in their pursuit of environmental goals. It's like, oh yeah, efficiency, eh? The efficiency of the tyranny in the service of your terror. And so... And I've watched him repeatedly, and I've listened to him a lot, and I've tried to do that clinically and with some degree of dispassion. And that's hard, too, because his father, Pierre, devastated the West in 1982 with the national energy policy. And Trudeau is doing exactly the same thing again. And so as a Westerner as well, I have an inbuilt animus and one that's well-deserved because he... he he doesn't have an answer to a problem that isn't overwhelmingly predictable ideologically. It's like you don't even need him. You just have to run the ideology. It has the answers. If he was willing to talk to me, I'd talk because I'd like to ask him. I have lots of things I'd like to ask him about. I mean, I've had... How do you hey, know if they're a terrified tyrant? Because the they're problem. willing to use compulsion on other people when they could use goodwill. The thing about him and his minions is I don't trust them at all. I think that what Trudeau is doing is testing his fingers in the wind constantly to see where the easiest moral advantage can be obtained and then driving down that direction as fast as he possibly can. I don't believe for a second that he has any such thing as principles. He had a job to do, which was to evaluate his MPs thoroughly and skeptically and pick the best people, period. But that isn't what he did. He said, oh, well, it's, it's 2016, so I'll appoint half women. It's like, well, that... Everybody gave him a pass on that, and so here we are. Now we have a budget that's equity-focused. We're slaughtering our fossil fuel industry, which basically means we're just handing it over to the Chinese, you know, the whole fossil fuel enterprise. I'm sure they're just laughing up their sleeves at our complete bloody idiocy. People, whether they were Democrats or Republicans, were very unhappy with Trudeau's treatment of the trucker convoy and also... Shocked, I would say, that he blamed it on the Americans, especially on the conservatives. And